Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another tutorial for Adobe Photoshop. Today I'm going to show you how to create a bright illuminated neon sign effect. I've created many tutorials in the past that provide you with a combination of Photoshop layer styles to produce a colourful glowing effect, but today we're going to take it to the next level with more detail to make this neon effect look much more realistic, with glossy tube reflections, wall mounting brackets and dangling power cables. But first, if you really love creating neon effects, you might want to check out the Neon Toolbox. It's packed full of resources to help you create custom neon signs, complete with backgrounds and other elements, such as bars, grids and wall hooks. Inside, there's 95 one-click layer styles of every colour under the sun, plus loads of ready-made assets to create a custom scene. Follow the link in the description to get up to 30% off. To create the neon sign effect, make a new document in Adobe Photoshop. I'm using dimensions of 3000 by 3000 pixels. You also want to use the RGB colour mode. We need a background to place our neon sign upon. This brick wall texture is freely downloadable from Unsplash.com. Open it in Photoshop, then go to Select and All, followed by Edit and Copy. Close the file to return to the main document, then go to Edit and Paste. Go to Edit and Free Transform, then scale the background to fit within the canvas area. Go to Image Adjustments and Desaturate to make the brick wall black and white. Then add a Levels Adjustment layer in the Layers panel. This brick wall photo has somewhat of a matte effect, so bring back in the shadows to make the darkest parts black. Clip the highlights to boost the contrast, then darken the whole image by bringing in the highlights output levels to around 70. Select the Type tool to lay out the wording of your neon sign. Font trace is crucial here. You at least want to make use of a mono weight font, but I found the perfect typeface called HT Neon on Adobe Fonts. It doesn't have any intersecting strokes, so the text will actually look like individual tubes. Click the link in the description to activate this font in Photoshop. Double click the layer to begin adding a mixture of layer styles to build the bright neon glow. Start with a colour overlay to set the base colour of your neon tube. Bright reds, blues, yellows and greens all work well. I'm going for hot pink. Add an inner glow next to illuminate the tube. All these effects are built upon the default state, so click reset to default if your last used settings are loaded. Change the colour to white and the blend mode to screen. Choose centre for the source setting so the glow emits from the middle, allowing the colour to fade in towards the edges, much like how a real neon tube often has a bright white hotspot. Reduce the choke to zero, but adjust the size so the white gradually fades out. Around 30 pixels should work at this scale. Change the contour to the preset with the bumpy lines. Rather than a smooth colour transition, this adds some banding that helps to add some texture to the neon tube. Add an outer glow to start enhancing the luminance. Set the colour to the same hue as the colour overlay, then increase the size to take away the hard edge. Around 30 pixels should do. Alter the opacity to around 50%. Add a drop shadow and configure the settings to linear burn using the default black colour. Set the distance and size to 30 pixels to apply some basic shading. It's not an accurate shadow cast from the neon light source, but it just helps lift the text from the background. It isn't possible to add extra outer glow effects, but it is possible to add more drop shadows so we can reconfigure a new drop shadow to effectively act as an outer glow by setting the colour to pink, or whatever the colour of your neon, and blend mode to linear light at 100% opacity. Bring the distance value back to zero, then increase the size to around 100 pixels to make it a much bigger glow. Add another drop shadow to enhance the glow even more. It can help to move the colour across the spectrum to add some interesting effects, in my case transitioning from pink to blue. Max out the size value to make this more of an ambient glow. Some interesting shine effects can be added to make the tubes look more glassy and reflective, rather than just colourful lines. Add a bevel and emboss. Configure the size and depth to around 30 pixels and 170%. These values can be altered to find the best results. Change the contour profile to the preset with the two spiky points, named Ring. Then set the blend mode for the highlights and shadows to overlay, but switch the colours around for the best result. Let's add a colour cast to the surrounding background area. Add a solid colour adjustment layer and choose a hue similar to your neon glow. 
Since my glow fades to a bluey purple, I'm choosing a slightly purpley pink. Set the blending mode of this layer to colour dodge, which allows the colour to interact with the layers below. We don't want it to add more intense effects to the layer styles, so click and drag it below the text in the layers panel. Double click the layer and alt and click the little arrow icon on the left side of the underlying layer slider. Drag it to split the arrow in half to blend out the darker areas, leaving the pink glow just on the highlights. Fill the layer mask with black using the command and backspace shortcut, then set up the brush tool with a large soft tip. Paint around the text to restore the pink glow so it fades away towards the edges. Any finer adjustments can be made by altering the fill value. Reducing it to 95% just takes the harshness away from parts of the colour dodge effect. Photoshop neon sign effect tutorials often stop here as just some glowing lines against a wall, but there's a couple more tricks that can help to create a more realistic scene. Follow the link in the description to download this free picture of brackets from unsplash.com. Draw a selection around this bracket in particular, then copy and paste it onto its own layer to isolate it from the rest. Go to Select and Subject to allow Photoshop to create a quick selection. Copy again, then close this image to return back to the main working document. Paste in the bracket graphic. Photoshop's selection was only rough, so quickly go to Layer, Matting and Defringe to take away any haloing. Enter 10 pixels. Move this layer below the Colour Dodge layer to allow those vibrant colours to interact with the bright shiny material in this image, which really helps to make it appear as if it's part of the scene. Use the Command and T shortcut for Transform and scale it down to fit behind the neon tubes. It's worth filling in the little circle by selecting it with the Magic Wand tool, then fill with black using the Alt and Backspace shortcut. Double click the layer and add a drop shadow. Reconfigure the settings to 5 pixel distance, 10 pixel size and an opacity of 15% to just add a subtle shadow. For the next step it helps to have the auto select option for the move tool turned off so you can easily drag new copies of the bracket without accidentally selecting the wrong layer. Hold the alt key and drag the bracket to make a duplicate. Use command and T to rotate the graphic and position it elsewhere on the neon tube. Repeat this step several times to mount your neon tubes to the backdrop. When you're done, shift and click to select all the bracket layers from top to bottom and use the command and G shortcut to group them together to tidy up the layers panel. Add a new layer and set up the brush tool with maximum hardness but just a 10 pixel tip size. In the brush settings reduce the spacing to zero and enable smoothing which you can then max out to 100% in the options bar. Hold shift to draw a straight vertical line leading from the start point of the first neon tube. Continue drawing lines to connect all other endpoints with a cable. Since we have max smoothing you do have to draw quite slowly but it helps to generate a smooth line with no wobbles. Any areas that require a longer line to bridge the gap aim to mimic the fall of a cable with a curved line. This isn't exactly how real neon signs are wired up but it helps to add a little more realism to this neon sign effect. Extend the last line vertically back off the canvas. Double click this layer to add a bevel and emboss effect. Reset the settings to default then deselect to use global light to be able to alter the angle without affecting all of the lighting effects. Find an angle that adds a highlight strip along the line. Then just alter the highlights colour to match the overall neon glow. Add a drop shadow which will automatically use the same settings as last time, which are ideal for the cables too. Add a new layer at the top of the layer stack, then reduce the brush tip size to 4 pixels. Zoom into one of the bracket graphics. We want to draw two lines across the neon tube wherever a bracket is placed. But first hold the command key or control key on windows and click the thumbnail of the text layer to load its selection. Now we'll only be able to draw the line over the neon. Draw a couple of lines wherever there's a bracket to depict a kind of strap that is connecting the neon tube. Again it's not super accurate but it's all that's required to just give this neon sign effect an extra touch of realism. Go to select and deselect then add the same bevel and embossed layer style to this layer too. Reduce the fill amount to around 
to produce some subtle lines that help to connect the neon sign to the brick wall in the background. As an optional finishing touch, go to Layer and Merge Visible, but hold the Alt key while clicking to create a merged copy on a new layer. Add a Camera Raw filter and adjust the various settings to fine tune the finished piece. Bumping the contrast slightly, boosting the highlights and increasing the texture values all help to enhance the final result. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.